Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today's question comes in around deep learning frameworks in Java, not Python. So find out about how you can use Java instead of Python for deep learning frameworks. So, you know, we've talked about it here on this channel around using neural networks and being able to train models, but let's find out what we can do with Java in deep learning. So today's episode comes in and we're talking about deep learning frameworks that use Java, not Python. So today the question is, you know, are there specific deep learning frameworks that use Java, not Python? And so first off, you know, let's talk a little bit about deep learning, do a recap. So deep learning, if you remember, is the use of neural networks whenever we're trying to solve a problem. See it a lot in multimedia, right? Like, you know, you see image detection, like does this image contain a cat or not contain a cat? And so the deep learning approach is to take those images that are, you know, if we're talking about supervised, so take those labeled image images, so of a cat, not of a cat, feed those into your neural network and let it decide what those features are. And at the end, you get a model that's going to tell you, is this a cat or is this not a cat within some confidence, right? Hopefully not 50%, maybe closer to 99 or 97. But that's the deep learning approach versus the machine learning approach that we've seen a good bit. And we see, you know, we talk about Hadoop and traditional analytics from that perspective is in machine learning, we're probably going to use some kind of algorithm like, you know, singular value decomposition or PCI. And we're going to take, you know, these images and we're going to look at each one and we're going to define each feature, right? From the cat's nose, you know, ears to the cat's nose. And we're going to feed that through the model and it's going to give us some kind of confidence. Well, the deep learning approach, we get to use a neural network. It defines some of those features, helps us out a lot. It's not magic, but it is a little bit. So really, really innovative approach. So the popular languages and what we've talked most about on this channel and probably other channels and most of the examples you've seen are all around in Python, right? So um, I did do a video before where I was wrong on C++. There was more C++ in deep learning than I really originally thought. And you can check that video out where we kind of go through and talk about that. And I come in and say, hey, Sorry, I missed the boat on that one. But so, so the most popular language, one, one. I mean, I did a Pluralsight video on it, take control of your career, um, around uh, TensorFlow and using TFLearn. So TensorFlow is probably far and away the most popular one. You've seen it with stats that are out there. Also PyTorch, Cafe2, MXNet, and then, you know, some other, you know, higher level languages where Keras is able to use, you know, some of, some of TensorFlow and be a higher level abstraction. But most of those are going to use Python and then some of them have C++. Most examples that you're going to see out there just from my experience and just working, you know, in the community is Python, right? Most people are looking for those Python examples. But on this channel, we've talked a lot about, you know, options in Hadoop for, you know, non-Java developers. But this is an opportunity where all you Java developers out there, you're looking for, hey, I, we want to get into the deep learning framework. Um, you know, we don't want to have to code everything ourselves. Are there, you know, are there some things that we can attach on to? And the answer is yes, there are. So it's not as popular um, as, you know, Python right now or R and uh, C++ in the deep learning frameworks. But there is a framework called Deep Learning for J that is a Java-based framework. And so the Java-based framework is going to allow for you to use Java. You can still use Python though. <laughs> so <laughs> even, you know, even, even with the framework, you can abstract away and do Python. But if you're specifically a Java developer and looking to, I mean, maybe you want to get in and contribute to the, um, you know, deep learning for J community and be able to take, you know, take it from that perspective, or you're just wanting to be able to implement it in some projects. Maybe you're like, Hey, you know what? I'm a Java developer. I want to, I want to continue doing Java. Java has been around since 95, right? So, you know, you want to jump into that, then deep learning for J is the one for you. So really maybe think about, you know, why, you know, why would you want to use a Java based uh, deep learning framework for people that, you know, maybe aren't familiar with Java or don't, don't have it. So, you know, one of the things is it claims to be, you know, a little bit more efficient. So, you know, it's going to be more efficient than using, you know, an abstraction layer from, from that perspective in Python. But also there's a ton of Java developers out there. You know, there's a community talked about how it's been around since 95. So there's an opportunity out there to tap into a lot of developers that have the skills to be able to use it. And so there's, you know, a growing need, right? Like there's, you know, there's communities all around the globe in different little, little subsets and little subs areas. Java is one of those. I mean, if you look at what we did from a Hadoop perspective, so many people 
that were Java developers moved to that community. Also, a lot of people that didn't really do Java. So, I like, like I said, at the point I was at in my career, I was more of a uh, .NET uh, C Sharp developer. Um, jump, you know, fast forward to uh, getting into the Hadoop community, went back to my roots as Java. So I'd done some Java in the past and, you know, went, went through that phase. And so for somebody like me, maybe I would want to go back out. I don't know. I've, I've kind of gone through more of Python, but a lot of different options out there, just being able to, you know, give, you know, Java developers a platform to be able to get involved in deep learning, right? Like a deep learning is very popular. So, you know, th those are some of the reasons that you might want to go. But the question is, you know, when you think about it, so if, if I'm not a Java developer or, you know, what would you recommend? Would you recommend me not learn TensorFlow and, and, and go into deep learning for J? You know, I think that one's going to depend. I mean, we say, we say it a lot in here. It's going to depend on what you're using in your organization, right? And what your skill set is, right? If you're mostly a Python person, my recommendation would be continue on or jump into the TensorFlow area. But if you're working on a project that, you know, is using you know, deep learning for J, then by all means, go down, you know, go down that path and learn, learn more about it. If you're a job developer and you want to get into it and you don't want to transition skills, or you're just looking to be able to take, you know, test something out and play with it. And you don't want to have to write it in Python. You want to be able to do it in, in Java. Yeah. You, you use that. So these are, these are also just tools, right? We're not going to get transfixed on any tool, right? Like we're not, we're not going to go all in and say, you know what? I'm only going to be a Java developer or I'm only going to be this. We're going to, we're going to be able to transition our skills and there's always going to be options out there to do it. And in these frameworks too, right? Like, you know, deep learning for J is awesome, but maybe there's another one that's, that, that's coming up that, you know, people would want to jump into. So like I said, don't get, don't get so transfixed with certain frameworks, right? Like Hadoop was awesome. We broke, broke it apart. You know, a lot of people navigated to Spark and still use HDFS as a base. There's always kind of skills that you can go to, but if you go in and say, hey, I'm only gonna ever do MapReduce and it's always gonna be in Java, then you know, you're gonna have some challenges uh, throughout your career. And that's not just in data engineering, that's throughout all IT and heck, probably throughout all careers, right? Like, you know, so just be able to be flexible for it. So if you're a Java developer, if you're looking to test some things out, definitely, definitely jump into it. If you don't have any Java skills and you know it's not something that you're particularly wanting to do, then I don't recommend you running in and trying to learn Java just for this, right? Like if you're doing if you're doing Python, steady on with TensorFlow, right? Or PyTorch or Cafe, whatever you're using. So until next time, see you again on Big Data Big Questions. Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss an episode. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section here below. Thanks again.